All right. So this is the uh, floating hide, inflatable, from Mr. Jan Gehr for uh, photographers. It's a really nice floating hide. And uh, I, I was thinking I'm gonna make a review of it. So I haven't seen too many reviews on it on, the, uh, on YouTube, or none at all, I think. But there are some written ones, which are good. Um, I haven't made a review before, so bear with me if I'm doing mistakes. And I'm going to try to do this in one take, so you kind of get a feel for how hard it is to put up, or actually it's very easy to put up, but the amount of time it takes. Anyway, this is it. It comes in uh, a bag, which you can carry on your back if you like, but uh, it's not heavy. I don't know what it can be. Five, six kilos, seven maybe. Not heavy, small, I'm guessing 20 or something centimeters, 30 or something centimeters, and 40, maybe 50, 45 centimeters, so not big. Inside here, there are everything we need for photographing, except the camera. There's a plate where you connect your um, gimbal. There's an um, air pump and a hose for it, air pump hose. There's a netting, which uh, you can use inside the tent to um, store stuff and make sure it doesn't drop into the water. There's the uh, camouflage tent with the rods. Rods. And the tent. The bag for it. There are some ropes to connect the um, plate to the um, inflatables. And this is the inflatable. It's, yeah, it's a U-turn uh, rubber, really tough, really tough rubber. I can't imagine you ever gonna poke a hole on this one. So this is uh, it. There's a lot of loops to uh, connect the tent to, and there's uh, it's something where you put the uh, tent rods in and these flaps are used to secure the uh, plate to this one. So this is the pump. There's a cork uh, gasket here, which you put uh, on this hole. No, I'm sorry, this not. The yellow side, this one, goes here on the outflow. And this cork gasket goes on the inflow on the uh, inflatable. It's a bit hard to get on, so I'm using a glove. I think this will uh, be less stiff with use. So, but make sure it's connected good. So then we're gonna pump it up. And you just step on this one. I have used this, uh, I've had, had this hide for almost a year and uh, just for note I bought it myself. I had, had nothing but good experience with uh, Jan from Mr. Jan Gehr. The service is impeccable. Uh, if there's anything you just contact him and there's I've never had any problem at all. I've used it for maybe I spent like 25-30 hours in this uh, in winter when it was really cold. We don't have too many birds in the winter, but I did uh, manage to photograph some swans and mallards. Today, I have no idea what we're going to be photographing. I've seen birds here, but I'm not so sure about the uh, species. So what do I think about this hide? Well, first off, it's, um, it's giving you some really good angles. Uh, usually, before I had this hide, I I was trying to find a spot to lay near the water so I could get the lens down to the water surface and get that low perspective, eye level uh, angle to the birds. But finding a place where you were able to lay for an amount of time was hard. And uh, usually it was not the best place for where the birds would be or the background. But with this one, you kind of get out into the water and you can navigate and put yourself to the perfect spot, both for the birds and for the light and for the background. Okay, so I found out that the best thing is not to inflate it 
fully because you have to put this plate in between here and if it's too uh, inflated and too hard it's hard to uh, use and I think maybe this system here could be better it's not the easiest way to connect this um, I, I don't really like this system but uh, I have no good idea exactly how it could be improved I'm sorry if this doesn't look really smart but that's one I think this is the most time consuming part of this uh, so, and I'm not really a fan of it. I think it's too uh, messy. I would prefer a better way, some clips or something. Mr. Younger, he has, uh, this is version one of his hides and he has another version, which uh, I think is uh, better. I haven't tried it, but from the what I can see, I think it's a lot better. Um, you get uh, five centimeters uh, lower perspective with it. It's consisting of two tubes and aluminium uh, connection between those. And the system to connect the uh, gimbal is better. But mainly the low perspective, I think, is uh, what uh, gives you do that, yeah, make that a better uh, height. But anyway, this is perfectly good too for what we are going to do. I'm shooting with uh, the Nikon 400 2.8. I found out that when you're talking about the low perspective, I found out that uh, I had to switch to to uh, a low profile uh, foot, which put me a few centimeters lower. This is what I don't like about this. These ropes are too short. They are way too thick. There's no point to have those this thick. So making a knot is hard. Anyway, that's how it is. I'm sure there's room for improvement. So you see, they don't really line up good too. Um, this is why I find it easier to do when it's not too much air inside it. So actually we're gonna take out some, or maybe I'm just an idiot and I'm not able to do this right. That's possible too. That's definitely possible too. You, how you use it is uh, you, um, you walk on the bottom and standing or on your knees or standing, depending on the depth, you're not floating on deep water with it. It's, it's, that's not possible. You can swim with it, but I found that there's uh, there's so much um, resistance in the uh, clothes I'm wearing that um, I'm taking with me too much water. So it's hard to swim, but it's possible. I'm debating on which is what's the best to have a lot of air and stiff it up or have less air and more contact with the water. The, le the more air you have, the, the less contact with the water it has. And it's more uh, a target of chops and waves. And um, the camera moves up and down when that happens. And you have to compensate with more shutter speed. And since we are trying to photograph in, in the good light in the morning and in the evening, where we already uh, have a problem with uh, shutter speed and ISO, the uh, choppiness or the movement of the camera ask more shutter speed from you, which you're not always able to give. But you just have to take enough shots. So that's it. It's inflated. Take this away. And then there's the, um, the rods. This normal tent rod. There's a curvature to them, like so. So we just put the rods in those holes, and they are tight enough. So I have no worries; it's gonna fly off because there's enough friction and it's hard enough to get them in. Didn't I have a glove here? Oh, there it is. The hands are slipping, so it's pretty hard to get it in. That's it. So the tent, it's uh, using ropes to connect to the uh, center of it. I usually just tie that. And I, I'm not worrying about tying too hard, so it's, I never use it in a lot of wind. I don't think it's gonna blow off corner these velcros and connect to the inside. I usually take the corners first, just a habit I guess, but I'm guessing I made a little mistake not connecting the uh, 
gimbal first. Maybe I should do that. So this might be my complaint number two, aside from uh, how do you connect the plate to the uh, inflatable. It's uh, this screw. I think I would prefer if it uh, actually were permanently here because there was delivered two, but I already, already lost one. And I think I should put a spacer because that uh, plastic, I imagine that if you screw this tight over and over again, it's gonna eat into the plastic. And eventually the small head of the screw is gonna go into the plastic and make the hole too big. So this is where the screw goes. And uh, like you can see, there's no real way. It, it kind of falls out. So I think I would love if it was permanently there. I don't see any point of taking it out ever. It can just be there for the plate. So that would be my second complaint. But uh, nothing we can't fix ourselves or live it at all. It's no problem. So then we go back to connecting the tent. Corners first. And I'm, I will say that I, this is the third time I'm doing this. I, it's not like I've done it a lot before because, like I said, in winter, when I this winter when I was using it most, I, I uh, put it up once and I just had it put together and moved it in and out of my house like this. And so this is actually the first time I'm doing it outside and when I'm about to go shoot. And I would imagine that if you're doing it early morning before light, it's it's a bit more complicated than, than it is in the daylight, but no problem at all. So this is where the lens goes. You have view, viewing holes on the sides. You have a back viewing hole and zipper here to get in and out of it. And you have viewing holes on the side. So this is it. I have no, for no real good use of the uh, netting. Uh, I think the plate to it works, so I'm not using the netting. I would prefer if there were uh, pockets. There were like pockets here, and maybe I can put converters and stuff like that. And there are Velcro. Can I show it? Let me see. You see here, there are Velcro patches. There are four Velcro uh, patches. And Younger sells um, some uh, pouches in different size with zipper and one side uh, is see-through and the other is uh, Velcro, so you can just patch them on there. They are useful, I don't have them, but I imagine they are useful. So this is it. And uh, as I consider it now, it's ready for use. So, That was uh, how to put it together. And now it's about uh, what clothes I wear. Imagine if you're living in a warm country, you wouldn't need, um, you, you could do it in a shorts or if you had warm water, but uh, we don't have that. It's uh, cold. There are snows on the mountain now, and there's a, there's a six, maybe seven degrees. And the water, I haven't measured it, but I would imagine it's um, some 10, 11, Degrees. So it can get a bit cold. So I'm using a dry suit. Miss Younger sells uh, dry suits, which are all black and they are, are easy to put on. I haven't tried it, but if they are, have zippers in front and from everything I can see of it, it looks like a good uh, dry suit and uh, easy to put on, which I think is uh, the main thing. And it doesn't rip a hole in it easy, but I don't have that. So I'm using my uh, kayaking dry suit, which is uh, yellow in color and zippers on the back and everything. So it's a good dry suit, but I would prefer uh, a dry suit that was uh, black or green. On my feet, I'm using, uh, I can just take it out and we can see. So the dry suit I'm using is this one. We don't care about what brand it is or anything. It's my kayaking wetsuit. Nothing more to say about that. Since it, uh, it's yellow on the top, and I want to be camouflage. I'm just using this uh, leaf camo on top. I, I don't mind if it's wet. So I just put that on up and I feel uh, camouflage enough inside the tent. And on my feet, since I'm an old uh, fly fisher for salmon, I uh, have some shoots with felt on 
which uh, I used uh, when I did uh, fly fishing before. I don't do that anymore, but when I did, I used this one, so I'm using these shoes. And they are big and I have a lot of space for uh, warm uh, clothing on my feet. Since I'm using it in winter time, um, we can have water down to zero degrees or two degrees or even icy water. So warm clothes is uh, paramount. So inside I'm using uh, sports or wool sports underwears. Today I'm counting on using two layers of uh, underwear, both on feet and uh, on top. So this uh, fleece sports underwear. And there's some wool underwear, two for my feet. I use uh, two wool socks like this. Uh, I'm using this fleece jacket under and that sport um, underwear. That's about it. And I have some protection for my camera, which I just put on because you, you can't splash water. So for this round, I'm gonna use that. I have something to step on. So I don't, uh, when I have the dry satin on, I don't wanna make a poke a hole on it. And since uh, you often uh, find yourself not walking on the bottom, but actually crawling, because near land it might be not so deep, so you are crawling on the, on the knees, and I don't want to wear and tear on my dry suit. So I use this uh, rubber rain pants with zippers on the side. I put those on and I can uh, crawl on the bottom and not worry about uh, poking holes uh, on my dry suit. So this is just my setup. So, well, I don't know if you need to see me dress, but I might as well do that. I'm sorry for what you're gonna see now. If I'm not able to hide it, of course. Okay, so uh, as you can see, I'm now ready for going into the water. I have my rubber rain pants on outside the dry suit. I have a leaf camo to hide the yellow of the, the suit. And I have uh, two layers on everything and uh, I'm ready to go out. And uh, let's see uh, if you get any pictures. I don't see any birds for the moment, but you know how nature is. You wait and wait and it never happens. So then it's all about just carrying it into the water and like so. So a few things that is nice with this. I mean, of, of course you could use plate flow to float your camera on and uh, camouflage on and you will get that low perspective and you would even be less visible, but many of the waters I'm photographing in, there's a very muddy. The bottom is very muddy and you kind of sink into it. And I would actually be scared of going into these waters without something to make sure I don't get stuck or sink. So with this, if I feel that I'm sinking too deep, I can kind of can float on it and make sure I'm not putting my whole weight and get back to safer grounds. So this is uh, one of the better, safest things I like with this. About safety issues, be somewhere you don't leave, do you always reach to the bottom. Don't use uh, a pant because when you bend down to the water, you fill the uh, pants with water and it's very dangerous to be in water with pants filled of water because you are not gonna be able to get up you sink. So that's very dangerous. I would always use a dry suit or no suit at all. Anyway, this is it. So just for me to go photograph.